Hi everyone, this is a free lecture from my course, Learn Maya, A Beginner's Guide to Creating Realistic Scenes. You can get the full 14 hour course for only $10 if you follow the link in the description. Hope you enjoy. In this lesson we are going to make a variation shader. So what we're going to do is we'll uh, make a shader which varies the colour of these covers. Okay. Now what I could do is I could take my cover shader and I could just select it and just select this and go to edit and duplicate shading network. Okay. After I've done that, I could just come in here and go to the plywood, go to the color balance here and just tint it. Okay. So I could put in whatever color I wanted here, but, uh, and then apply it to whatever cover I want. So that's the manual method. And that's good if you want specific colors. Okay. If you want a, a big scene, for example, let's say you had a big shelf full of these books and you wanted different color books on there. This shader is going to be for that purpose. Okay, so it's a bit overkill for this scene, but I'm just showing you it and it's just optional in case you want to know how to do this. So what we're going to use is a node called AI Color Jitter and we're going to be using AI Utility. So let's create those nodes. I'm going to go to press tab and type in AI uh, Color and Color Jitter is the third one down. So this is the Color Jitter. What this does, it takes in a texture and then it will apply a variation to that. You can vary the, the gain, so the, the amount, uh, you can color the, you can vary the color and you can vary the saturation. Okay. So the thing I'm going to use to put in there is called an AI utility shader. So I'm just going to press tab AI utility. If I can spell, there we go. Okay. So this is a really useful shader and this is actually a shader. So you can actually apply it. To your objects it's not a texture so i'm going to just get rid of this shading group because we're going to be using it as a texture so what this allows you to do is everything that is listed up here okay so if i just press spacebar just to start this up and i go to the uh, shading and go to basic for example this is basically the same as n to i okay so it's basically uh, this kind of uh, no lighting uh, just showing you the geometry look OK, so this has got one section for the shade. So you've got Lambert, which is a basic Lambert. You've got flat, uh, you've got ambient occlusion, you've got plastic and metal. So those those are different looks for this uh, shader. And then you can apply a color mode like a texture. OK, so these are all the different things. Uh, a lot of the different things that I showed you here. So things like the normal, for example, or the uh, wireframe. OK, this is useful for your show reel for example so if you combine this with your ambient occlusion here uh where's it gone ambient occlusion this looks pretty good so uh, you can use that for your show reel for example but for now i'm going to be using a flat so basically whatever you put uh it's not going to put any shading on it and it's going to be a um id so we're going to have object okay Okay, and then let's apply this and see what it looks like. I'm just going to plug this into the color and then I'll isolate it. So let's just plug this into the, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see this. Whoops. Let's bring up the hyper shade again. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the out color into the base color. OK, this is the cover shader. And uh, so I'm just going to just update my view here and just change this from wireframe back to shading. OK, and then uh, let's just isolate this so we can see it. So I'm going to click on AI color jitter and click on isolate. OK, and sorry, I meant to connect up the utility node. So the AI utility, just to show you what this does, to the base color and let's isolate that okay so now you can see you get a different color for every object so if you change this to uniform id for example it will give you a different color for every face as you can see or you could change it to primitive id which would be every triangle so each tr each face there is split into a triangle and that's got a different color as well okay so we want object and this is going to give us our object IDs. So what we're going to do is going to, that's going to be passed into our color jitter so that we can vary uh, different things inside there. 
and we'll mix that with our original color. So let's go ahead and just go take the out color, put it into the input of the color jitter and take the out color of this color jitter and we're going to mix it with the uh, wood paint. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a uh, blend colors. So I'm just going to type in tab blend and there it is blend colors. This is just a Maya node and uh, we're just going to go to out color connect it to color one out color from the jitter connect it to color two and just take the output and put that into the base color. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking this ID pass and we're changing it and then we're mixing it with the original and then putting it back on top. So let's have a look at each step. Let me just minimize this a little bit so we can see it. Okay, so we haven't changed our color jitter yet, so it's not doing anything. So the section that you have to change is in the object section okay so you can change it based on um, different things like procedural or uh, user data if you've added your own user data in there like a, a value or, or a, a um, variable uh, or you can do it based on object or face so this is the common use for this so every every separate object will get a different value for this so if we start changing this let's change the saturation for example you can see that each thing will get a different saturation. Let's try hue actually, let's just try hue. So now it's gonna vary the colors and you can see it's gonna take them into different directions. So I'm just gonna err on the side of, uh, on the right side. So it's gonna be, it would make it a little bit cooler, I think. And then you can vary the, the brightness as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that because it's making it too bright and maybe the saturation well that's a bit too much as well so i'm just going to leave that part of it and just vary the hue here okay and we'll just have a look at the next load along so so we're taking this guy we're varying the color and this just gives this color node by the way just gives us a bit of control so we can uh, fiddle around with this and get the colors that we want you know and because uh, uh, otherwise this one just gives us just one set of colors basically and so we we're going to mix that with the original color so let's just switch it towards the base material base uh, color because we don't want it to be all flat like this we want it to be kind of just a little tint on there and then we're going to look at the final result here okay let's unisolate this okay so you can see we've got a green one we've got uh, an orange one and we've got different colors so I'm just going to go to the isolate here uh, sorry the region uh, just so it goes quicker and let me just uh, turn off 3D manipulation actually and I'm going to go to the shot cam and let's just see what our actual render looks like let's move it over here okay so that's what it looks like at the moment so let's just change this up a little bit and maybe we can make it a bit brighter so go to the ai color jitter and change again up a little bit so it gets brighter okay so now you can clearly see that we've got some green here a bit purpley and a bit orangey and so we can we can you know play with this if we're not happy with the colors we can change this around Go towards this side and uh, the thing about random shaders is they are random so you know they're not very controllable so you do get a little bit of control but you you know you basically what you get is what you get so uh, you um, if you're working uh, on a project and your supervisor or uh, you know the director comes along and says oh, I don't like the color of that specific book then yeah, you'll have to uh, just assign just copy the shader and just remove the color jitter and then just put whatever color you want for that specific thing so um, otherwise it's quite tricky to kind of control the color of everything um, so that's my advice in terms of changing the color so you can play around with this for ages I'm just gonna put it back to something in the middle I think I prefer the cooler colors 
and it has got a seed here as well so that's the random seed so rather than fiddling around with these things if you just want to just uh, change the seed here you could just change a number in here and it will give you a different result okay as you can see so now we've got a kind of a greeny look let's have a look Okay, I'm just going to play around this till I get something that I like and um, hopefully you get the point of this this uh, shader here. It allows you to vary the color of objects based on just uh, separate objects and so it allows you to use one texture and just have a slight variation on that just so that you can uh, quickly create some visual complexity.